Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to Sniper Elite 4. A little while ago now, I made my Ranking Every Rifle video, which did rather well if I do say so myself. It's currently sitting on a little over 37,000 views, which is pretty mental. But in that video, I really didn't give the semi-auto rifles the right kind of press. So today I'm going to amend that and talk in depth about all the semi-auto rifles in the game because I know substantially more about them now than I did when I first made that video. This video is a ranking video, but different semi-autos are for different things, so I've ranked them on their ability to perform at range while still remaining versatile, which is what a semi-auto should be. And also, if you like this style of content, I'm happy to go over the bolt actions and the submachine guns and the pistols and the shotguns and all of that in separate videos in the future, so comment down below if you want something like that. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Now, I thought I'd start with the G43, as it is the only non-DLC semi-automatic rifle, and as a result is what most of you will be fielding. The G43 is one of the nicer semi-autos to shoot, as it's got very little recoil and has a pleasantly large 10 round magazine, which offers large capacity whilst not being so big that it's embarrassing when in public. The weapon offers average damage, it's not quite top of the tree, but it'll still hurt more than that expensive divorce you didn't agree to. The main issue with the G43 lies in its zoom level. 8x magnification when fully upgraded puts it on par with the Delisle carbine, which is quite frankly embarrassing. However, men with low zooms always bang on about how it's not size, it's about how you use it. And the G43 is exceptional at short to mid range, which is just as well. If you're on a close quarters map and you don't have the DLCs, the G43 is hands down where it's at. Next up, we'll be talking about the M1 Carbine. To say that the M1 Carbine isn't quite a sniper rifle is accurate. It's much more a specialist tool, like the Mauser pistol of rifles. The M1 Carbine strengths are numerous. Incredibly low recoil coupled with rapid fire makes this weapon very easy to use. Surprisingly, the M1 Carbine is also packing a 12x zoom, which when you consider the G43's undersized member is very impressive. One other great point about the M1 Carbine is the magazine, which holds the cool 20 rounds, which means that if you live in the north of England, it's big enough to live in. The M1 Carbine comes undone at damage, and especially muzzle velocity however. One should be expecting near continental bullet drop on this thing, which really doesn't help too much when trying to shoot at anything over 6 feet away. Additionally, the damage isn't up to much, and on Sniper Elite difficulty and above, it's unlikely that you'll kill someone with a body shot to one of these things. This is a problem with all semi-auto rifles, but it is especially the case with the M1 Carbine. In short, the M1 Carbine is kind of like a G43 on steroids. Excellent at close to medium range, but awful at anything beyond that. Now we're going to be talking about the SVT. The SVT and the Garand are basically the same gun, except the Garand is cooler because it goes ping when it's done, like a microwave or my dad's bicycle. If the M1 Carbine is a G43 modded for point blank, the SVT is a G43 modded for actual range. It's got that nice 12 times zoom, hits harder than Mr. Brightside, and it's got decently low recoil, which allows it to repeatedly hit shots in quick succession, which is really what it's all about. If the Mosin Nagant user is thinking one shot, two kills, the semi-auto user should be putting down their wax crayon and thinking 19 shots, one incapacitation. And the SVT goes above and beyond this calling by offering a decent chance of killing someone with a single body shot, which is quite a skill for a semi-auto rifle. The 10 round magazine is also good, although it's a little run of the mill. Up until now, the semis we've discussed all have disadvantages, but the SVT is the first one that can really hold its own against other, more sophisticated rifles, by which I obviously mean bolt actions. 
Next up, we have the M1 Garand, which is easily one of the most iconic rifles in the world, along with the AK-47 for all the right reasons, and the L85A1 for all the wrong ones. We'll start with the Garand's one notable disadvantage. Its 8 round on block clip has some size problems, which is an issue, although Garand users do seem to overestimate the sizes of other guys' clips, so compared to the SVT and the G43 you really aren't losing much. The 8 rounds the Garand offers is more than enough. The damage, range, muzzle velocity and recoil control are all either similar or superior to that of his main rival, the SVT, and far better than that of the G43. It's got a 12 times zoom when upgraded, which is the same as the Springfield, which is impressive. Once again, the Garand is able to hold its own against the big boys. And now we come to the magnum opus of the semi-automatic world, the epitome of all a semi should be, and a little more. The ZH-29 has a formidable 16 times zoom, which officially enters it into the long-range rifle category, and is the only semi-auto to have this distinction. The 20 round magazine is quite frankly compensating for something, as 20 rounds is top of the tree for rifle capacity, paired only with the M1 carbine. The damage is also highest in its class, far outdoing even the Garand, and making the G43 go bright red with embarrassment. The muzzle velocity is insensitively high, with the bullets of this thing moving faster than Jimmy Savile at a year 6 disco, making it a formidable choice at range. The ZH-29 does suffer in the recoil department though, with a strong kick that can sometimes make it difficult to use. Arguably, the ZH-29 is too much like a bolt action, but maybe that's why it's so good. One headshot per target has always been a smart move, and the ZH-29 reaffirms this belief. With so many of the Sophisticates moving to bolt action, maybe it's time for the peasantry to put down their G43s and enter the world of rifles that work, with the ZH-29 as the gateway drug of choice. Thank you everyone for watching the video. Remember to like, subscribe and comment. It costs you nothing and it's a great way to help out the channel. Stay safe and goodbye.